السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما I began in the name of Allah and sending blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I bear witness and testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness and testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah. My dear respected brothers, sisters and elders, I'd like to share with you a few verses from the Quran, from Surah Al-Duha, <clears throat> in which Allah Azza wa Jal 
strengthens the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by reminding him or recalling to him his previous experiences of the past of his childhood. Allah Azza wa Jal goes on to say to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى He says that, O Muhammad, did he not find you as an orphan and gave you refuge? Reminding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of his childhood experience. If we study the seerah, the uswa, or the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'd come to know that the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even from the time he was born, since he was a childhood, was very difficult. His father had already passed away. His mother passed away when he was six. The grandfather passed away when he was eight. He had continuous difficulties that he had to face. In our times, someone who's living in our times would call it childhood trauma. Facing through the loss of both of your parents and your only guardian, your grandfather, who also passes away. No place, no refuge from one house, from one guardianship, from one place to another. The Prophet Wasallam goes through this and many years after the prophethood or nubuwa, Allah Azza wa Jal recalls to him the same experience or the trauma that we would like to call in our times of childhood that he went through. And he reminds him, he says, Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. O Muhammad, did he not find you as an orphan and he gave you refuge? Wa wajadaka dalan fahada. And he found you wandering, searching, looking, looking for truth. Wa wajadaka dalan fahada. And he directed you and gave you guidance and put you on the right path. And did he not find you as a destitute in poverty, in difficulty, and made you rich? So here Allah Azza wa Jal recalls three things regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all of these three things are something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had faced. And it was considered a very difficult and a hard time for the Prophet ﷺ. If we try to go into the detail, the childhood life of the Prophet ﷺ, then the Prophet ﷺ becoming young adult and living in poverty and hardship and difficulty, and then marriage to Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, and then having access to wealth and grace, subhanAllah. And then the Prophet Wasallam's third difficult experience that the Prophet Wasallam at the age of 37, he was very tired out from his community and the practices of ignorance and jahiliyyah that was very prominent during his time. And the Prophet Wasallam would wander around searching for truth because he would not put up with the oppression and the injustice that he sees all around him. At the age of 37, the Prophet Wasallam isolated himself. He started reflecting. He started pondering. He couldn't find, he couldn't find any answer, nowhere to go. Then finally, after three years of reflection and isolation and hardship and difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends wahi upon him. So all of these three things that Allah azza wa jal mentions to the messenger Muhammad, he's being reminded again after many years when he is living good, when he is, has a good family. And then the Prophet ﷺ is reminded furthermore, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ Then, O Messenger Muhammad, as for the orphans, since you were born as an orphan, since you went through an orphan, since you had a difficulty, don't use it as something to hold you back, or to hold you down, or to complain and to say that I had a very difficult childhood, I had musibah, 
labor and hardship and difficulty upon me. I can't do anything. I have fallen into addictions. I have fallen into all of these problems because I had a difficult life. The Prophet ﷺ is reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember and to remind yourself of the difficult time and use it as a strength to help others. Use it as an advantage so that no one ever has to go through hardship, difficulty, or anyone who is an orphan does not have to face life just as you had faced Messenger Muhammad wasallam. So he says, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرُ As for the orphans, do not turn them away. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ As for those who ask you, Messenger Muhammad, do not use aggression towards them and do not repel them. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثُ And as for the blessings and the grace and the bounties of your Lord upon you, do not forget them, O Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear respected brothers and sisters, looking this, looking at all of this, the different accounts of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and relating them to our life, what we go through in our life, every single day, we go through hardship and difficulty, and these are somewhat considered day-to-day -day striving and struggle. If there's a disagreement with my boss or with my employee, or there's a disagreement with my wife and my children or my son or my father. Or there is an issue that we have come across financially. Something happened, the car broke down or you didn't get the paycheck. Whatever comes across in our life, understand that these are not something to take you down or to question you. Or to question your faith on your tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by no means these are considered musibah. By no means this is considered a musibah. One time my brother came to the masjid and he, subhanallah, uh, his car broke down and he started complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if this is the greatest calamity that has come upon anyone. The greatest, and subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, the reason why I remind my, you and myself is that sometimes in our life, we go through life problems and day-to-day -day difficulty, but we are not able to cope with the hardships and difficulties in our life. We fall into depression. We fall into addictions. We fall into other problems, blaming that, oh, because I had to go through this, because I had to face this, because my childhood was difficult, because I came from a war-torn country, or because I was this and this and so and so, so therefore it is justified for me to fall into these addictions or disobedience or these problems because I had to face so much musibah. My brothers and sisters, do we know what musibah is? Musibah is that when Allah Azza wa Jal takes your child away from you and you have to bury your own child with your own hand. Musibah is if you have some type of a difficulty and you're not able to walk and talk and you're not able to do the basic things and you don't have access to basic things. You don't know what to drink and what to eat and what to provide for your family or your children tomorrow or the next week. That is hardship and difficulty. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had seven children. Of the seven children, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam buried six of his children in his life with his own hands. Pray, pray that I never have to bury a child of my own with my own hand. Or ask those people who are in such a situation or such difficulty and musibah, they would tell you how their lives and their perspectives and their lives have completely changed them. The Prophet ﷺ marries Ruqayya. Uh, uh, and then she passes away at the age of 21, the first child. And then he buries another child, Umm Kunthum. She was 27 years old. And then he buries, subhanAllah, uh, Qasim and Abdullah, both of his two young sons who passed away at the age of two and three. And then the Prophet Wasallam's daughter, Zainab radiallahu anha, she passes away at the age of 30. 
And then his last son Ibrahim passes away when he's two years old. The only daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, Fatima, lived only six months after the Prophet ﷺ. Bearing six children. It's not easy, my brothers and sisters. That is musibah. That is hardship. And that is difficulty. Yet it did not dwindle on his faith. He did not start to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the message that I share with you, my brothers and sisters, that whatever hardship and difficulty that you went through, you can call it a childhood traumatic experience, or you can call it an extraordinary childhood. If you had an extraordinary childhood, or young, or adult, or youth age, then know that you should also have an extraordinary future as well. If you were born as an orphan and you went through hardship and difficulty or you were once a refugee or in poverty, then make sure that as you grow up and you have strength and opportunities and resources that no one around you has to go through what you went through. This is how the Prophet ﷺ is being reminded to not take his difficult experiences and hold him back, but instead... Turn it around. Use it as an advantage to help other people so that no one, no one around you has to go through what you went through. And that is success. That is a successful story. We pray dua, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah azza wa jal give us the ability to understand the teachings of the Quran and to follow upon the footsteps of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Majid wa anfa'na wa iyyakum bil ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ماكثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد عليه الصلاة والتسليم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد عليه الصلاة والتسليم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة